In the U.S., there was a great model called venture economics, and it was owned by a rather interesting but strange guy. What it did was it, it handled conferences that attracted investors to various themes, and that gave a, a, a platform for the managers in the U.S. to talk to the investors and raise money or not raise money, tell them their strategies. And we thought, why not do a venture economics in Asia to present the industry to investors? And talk about their concerns and what they want to have uh, as risk control. What should be the management strategies, and is anybody interested? So we contacted Venture Economics, and they had no interest. So I was a venture capitalist, and I had some friends in the industry like Victor Fung and Rao and others. And I got them together around the idea of starting the Asian Venture Capital Journal, and so, in effect, the industry itself started the venture. You know, the Asian Venture Capital Journal. The first investment we made was in 1984. Uh, when I flew to to Tokyo with Peter Brook, whom we had invested in previously, when he had, after he had formed TA Associates in Boston, but he formed Advent International in 1984. His pattern was to gather uh, to get together with a very successful businessman in different countries around the world, and combine Peter's experience in successful U.S. venture capital investing with a local businessman's knowledge of the markets and and, and of the country. So in In Japan, he teamed up with a gentleman by the name of Yaichi Ayakawa, who、um, happened to be an MIT graduate,、um, very well respected in Tokyo.、Uh, and together, Peter and Yaichi Ayakawa formed what was called、um, the、uh, Advent Techno Venture in Tokyo. Two years later,、uh, Peter came back with、um, uh, the idea of forming a fund in Hong Kong, and it was to be called the Hong Kong Investment Trust. And he teamed up there. The local businessman he teamed up with there was Victor Fung, and、uh, that was our second investment. And then subsequent to that, we made investments with Lewis Rutherford, with、uh, Lewis Bowen, Anil Tadani, Bob Thaline, and a number of other people in the in the Asian market as we were gaining our experience during the 80s. The investors thought that Asia would theoretically be a good place for them to invest. Through this model, through the venture model, and、um, they felt that the、uh, demographics of Asia were excellent and would lead to higher returns than the venture industry was experiencing as of that time in the States. The returns happened to be very good in the States at that time, so the. Uh, the level was raised quite high from the beginning, and most of us failed to achieve that level of anticipation or expectation. Some of us, I, in all modesty, will say myself, did funds that exceeded the U.S., and we also did funds that were basically、uh, lower than the states. And a lot of venture funds did not exceed the expectations, and some, as it turned out,、uh, missed the ball entirely, and found that the model of investing was not suitable to certain industries or certain countries. So everybody, for a number of years, asked the question, why? The early investments. In Asia, not just ours, but everybody's investments in Asia in those early days, I would say generally were not very successful. As is true in any new markets,、uh, there wasn't a lot of experience. There weren't、uh, entrepreneurs who had done it before. There weren't venture capitalists who had done it before.、Uh, there weren't track records to look at to make judgments about who you would invest in.、Um, other things that are critical to success in venture capital that were. Present in the United States, 
were not present over there, such as stable governments, uh, stable currencies, IPO markets, exit mechanisms. Those early investments were, uh, I would say, discouraging, um, but they're a way for, for everybody to learn in the industry. We assume that we as the investors and the entrepreneurs were on the same page. Um, and as I say, those early days were really venture type investing where we and the partnerships that we were invested through did not have control of the companies, unlike the later models when the buyout business came in and control was, was in the hands of the investors. Um, in the early days, the control was in the hands of the entrepreneurs. And, um, and therefore, the experience of, of the investors, of the venture capital fund managers, um, while it was very important, they weren't able to exercise perhaps all the, as much control as they might have liked to and as we became used to in the U.S. in the venture capital model. Um, so, and I, this is a little bit of a biased point of view, but I think the, many of the early entrepreneurs looked at the, the equity that came from the venture capital firms almost like debt um, and, and uh, didn't really think of us as partners. Yeah, so I started uh, at H&Q right out of business school and uh, had every plan to work in Silicon Valley doing tech investing. Uh, but it happens that the managing uh, general partner of H&Q Venture Partners was a guy named Talit Su, who uh, was building a private equity business in Asia. And in those days, you do whatever your boss tells you to do. So I found myself on a plane to Taipei in the fall of 1988. And that's when I first started um, working on Asian deals. I think the first iteration of private equity in Asia, and this was pretty close to the beginning of it, was uh, a version of venture capital. And the markets at that time were, uh, you know, there's plenty of capital for venture deals within families, individuals, uh, companies that were sponsoring venture backed, other venture backed deals. Uh, what was missing in the market at the time was a so called, I mean, a pre in first institutional round capital. So the typical case was a company in Taiwan or the Philippines or Singapore that was entrepreneur owned and was looking to bring in capital uh, in anticipation of an IPO. And most of the uh, local uh, markets required there be some outside investor um, uh, to provide to validate in effect the, uh, that the books were accurate, that another professional investor had looked at the company and had decided to invest. And I think that's kind of how the business got started. And in, in the case of H&Q, uh, market timing was uh, was really excellent because they started in 1986 when the market really took off and there were a bunch of very, very strong tech deals. Um, companies like Acer, uh, TSMC, UMC were all, uh, were all early deals that were done by the venture community in Taiwan and I think it took, took off from there. I started off in this region, uh, in, uh, in VC. So I joined the industry around 95. 96, I think it's technically 95, um, when I joined Nico Capital. So this was the time in the 90s when the capital, or venture capital as we call it, was pretty much dominated by uh, American, European and Japanese. So I was actually with a Japanese VC at that time uh, for about three years. Uh, and we didn't survive the crisis. So at that time there was no buyout to talk about, right? There's, there's literally no control transactions. There were some who tried to do that. I think Hunter BC, uh, George Raffini were trying to do some buyout, Palma. Some of them were trying to do buyout, but it, effectively what was um, what was very uh, common, there are three types I would call it. One is pre-IPOs, pre-IPO pre type investments. Um, one is what I would call venture-ish, dominated by largely Taiwan at the time. Was the, the, the Thai, this is the time of the PC peripherals. Uh, and hardware storage um, technology. So Taiwan because of the link to the US um, and the emergence of Taiwan and Korea. So VC is somewhat largely dominated by Taiwan, pre-IPO basically across Asia, largely in Southeast Asia because um, the emerging market, I call it the first emerging market bubble. The stock market was very vibrant 
I think from 93 on 92 93 onwards Southeast Asia so from Indonesia Philippines Thailand Malaysia it was very hot IPO market was very very hot and, and so pre IPO uh, pre IPO was uh, was um, very popular uh, and broadly defined infrastructure so there were some infrastructure type deal with private investors uh, participating through private equity venture capital structure so I would say pre-crisis these are the kind of deals and these we were looking at 